الحمد لله صلى الله على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he ordained the fasting or siyam, he explained that this is a tool for you to attain piety or righteousness, so you may be righteous. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as siyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. So you will find your way towards righteousness. So siyam is definitely the path to reach piety and to be righteous and there are levels of siyam where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger explained that especially in the sunnah of the Prophet of course the first level that we all know which is abstaining from food and desires but today we will discuss it from another level Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that to reach piety or righteousness, siyam is a good tool. Therefore, we need to understand what really stops us from being righteous or have piety. Usually it's ourselves that limit us from reaching levels of piety and righteousness. It's within ourselves, not from outside. So Siyam is dealing within ourselves, uh, is treating this weakness within ourselves so we can defeat this barrier. Siyam or fasting deals with our own shortfalls, our own limitations that prevent us from being righteous and number one huh, is our desires our own desires usually will limit us from reaching piety and being righteous our own desires people desire is the one that lead us to commit sins to transgress to offend to disregard the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's our own desires. Don't you see that people, for the sake of collecting money, they will do anything. People with power, they get deceived and they will transgress. People with all their own huh, might and health, they could transgress. So it's, all, it's the desires that we have within ourselves. This is why fasting deals with desires. That's why when we fast, what you do is you deal with the most frequent desires that you practice. And number one desire, number one desire is food, is eating and drinking that we all practice all the time. It's not haram to eat and drink, but it's a desire that we practice all the time. And Ramadan comes to tell us, I, need, I want to train you to control your desires. I want you to control the most frequent desires that you are practicing so you can elevate yourself. You can be elevating huh, in the scale of piety and righteousness. So food and sex is the desire that people usually huh, have strongest. And Siyam comes and says, Put a limit to it. Huh? Put some limit to that so you can get stronger. So your soul will get stronger. Your body will be stronger. So you prove yourself yet you can. So in Ramadan, the first lesson is, yes, we can. You can fast from morning to sunset. So yes, you can abstain from many things. Yes, you can stop yourself from doing many things because you can abstain from the most frequent desire. Then you can do the less than that, right? This is number one and very apparent that we practice every day in the day of fasting. And I, as I told you before, this is an example of our whole life. In your whole life, you stop yourself from doing the haram 
and you keep saying, ah, I want to do it to obey Allah until I meet Allah. In Ramadan, you say, I stop doing it until Maghrib. When, it, uh, when sun sets, you, you are free to eat and drink and practice your daily normal life. Right? So this is number one. Another thing the Prophet ﷺ is turning our attention, he's saying, you got to abstain not only from the food and drink, you got to abstain from haram. If you cannot abstain or stop yourself from committing the haram, Allah is in no need for you to leave the halal. Man lam yada zur. If you cannot drop or leave the falsehood saying and acting upon the, upon the falsehood, Allah is in no need for you to leave the halal, the food and the sex and your desires, right? If people cannot abstain from lying, stealing, killing, oppressing, what's the point of abstaining from food and halal desires? That's what the hadith is saying. That's what the Prophet ﷺ is turning our attention. Don't be silly. Allah is asking you to leave the halal so you by default should leave the haram. So of course, to reach piety, Allah is talking about people who are clean, who abstained from, hala, uh, from haram, and now they are ready to leave their food, their halal food. For sure you should be, uh, just like you take a shower, you remove your dirt, right? And then you put some perfume. You don't put perfume on uh, scum, on dust. So, you buy, buy for sure, before you leave your food and halal stuff, you'll be clean from haram. Not only that, the Prophet ﷺ telling us, when you are fasting, in the day of fasting, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ صَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ You gotta have the ethics of fasting. So fasting is not uh, torture, it's not some burden on you, just like salah, just to remind you, you know, you know the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, when he's saying, when you go to salah, when you come to masjid, don't run, don't, don't jog, come with tranquility, huh? when you walk to salah, when you come to the masjid, to make salah, I see some people run and jog and they want to catch the salah, you didn't catch the rak'ah. That's wrong, my brothers. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, come to salah with full discipline and tranquility. وَعَلَيْكَ السَّكِينَةُ وَالْوَقَارِ Sakina, my brothers, is inside. Waqar is outside. Huh? Sakina is tranquility within yourself. So come with tranquility. Waqar is you look good. Huh? You dressed well, you look good, so you don't come and then you get dusty and so on and you... No, come walk properly and come to the masjid with proper huh, steps and catch what you catch. That's the ethics of doing the salah. It's not just to come to the salah and then you double park your car and you block two, three people and then you leave your slippers huh, in the middle of the... Huh, hallway and then you come to the masjid and you step on two three people this is not salah this is not proper way of doing the salah the prophet ﷺ is telling us how to make the salah and the ethics of making the salah the same way how to fast in the day you are fasting in the day you are fasting you don't speak the language you possibly speak in the other days. You don't talk the same talk. You don't raise your voice or argue the same way you possibly could argue other times. You don't respond to people the way you could possibly respond when you're not fasting. No, you should have the ethics of siyam. You should have the manners of fasting. So fasting is within and also you're outside. So you should look also as a fasting. You should behave like a fasting. So you don't speak the language of lay people. Uh, you don't use profane language. 
You don't use and speak about six and about uh, uh, money and, and all this nonsense. Don't speak. When you're fasting, this is not to, for you to talk. And don't oppress others. You don't attack, offend, sorry. You don't offend others with language. You don't offend others with your language. Watch what you're saying. Choose your wording. Choose the good words when you are fasting. Choose the best of words when you are fasting. Not only that, don't respond uh, to other things coming from outside. If someone offends you with words or wants to argue or wants to start an argument, you say, Allahumma inni sa'im. You say vocally, loudly, means you say it. I am fasting. Remind yourself that you are fasting. It's not appropriate for you to respond. And remind the other party that we are in Ramadan. I'm fasting. I'm not fit to respond the same way. I'm not fit to argue. I'm not fit to say anything that could offend you, even if you started the argument. So you should fast within and outside. Fasting is a whole discipline. Just like salah. It's not just you make the salah. This is not right. It's not just you throw the zakah. Just like someone is giving, you know, wants to give sadaqah and taking selfie with the other. This is not zakah. This is not sadaqah. This is what Allah call it. It's, it's you are hurting the person and you're hurting yourself. You're not making a person any favor by giving the sadaqah. This will turn against you if you do it like that, for, just for the show off. You should give it for the sake of Allah. You should give it with a good intention. You should give it in the best of ways. If this will hurt the needy person, don't do it this way. Get someone else to give it. Give it to some institute to distribute it. So it doesn't hurt the feelings of the needy and the poor. And the same way when you do the other ibadah. You are dealing with Allah. You are dealing with the Lord. So you are, you got to check your heart. Is it clean? Are you doing it sincerely? This is what Siyam should be. Siyam means you should fast within yourselves, within uh, your stomach and your brain. Uh, and your own ethics should also have the manners of Siyam. This way we can find our way to taqwa, our way to piety our way to righteousness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us do it this way and then you will be disciplined you know this is the school that graduated all our ancestors the great Muslims who ruled the world because they could manage their own whims and desires through fasting through the uh, the, the training of Ramadan and likewise may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Accept our fasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring peace to our brothers in Syria and in Yemen, in Palestine and all around. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us all. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Wa salli lahum wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.